Dr. Benny, some chemical reactions require a series of reactions. How do we write the law of mass action for combined reactions? Good question, Benjamin. You are correct that some chemical reactions compose of a series of reactions. If we know the equilibrium constant for those individual reactions, we can find the equilibrium constant for the overall reaction. In order to do that, we will need to determine the effect of mathematically manipulating the chemical equation on the equilibrium constant of a reaction. So, if we look at the law of mass action for our first reaction, what we see is K1 equals the concentration of Y over the concentration of X. If we were to reverse the reaction, what would be the law of mass action for the reverse reaction? It would be the concentration of X over the concentration of Y. Correct. We will write K minus 1 indicating the reverse reaction equals the concentration of X over the concentration of Y. Notice that K1 and K minus 1 are slightly different. Dr. Benny, aren't they just the inverse of each other? Correct. Mathematically, they are just the inverse of each other. So, if we want to find the equilibrium constant for a reverse reaction, all we have to do is to take the inverse of the equilibrium constant for the forward reaction. Okay, let's continue. We begin with our first reaction again. We have the same law of mass action as before. K1 equals the concentration of Y over the concentration of X. If we multiply the reactants and product of the first reaction by 2, the second reaction becomes 2X yields 2Y. What would be the law of mass action for K2? Can you also explain how K2 relates to K1? K2 equals the concentration of Y square over the concentration of X square. K1 and K2 may look very different at first, but I could rewrite the law of mass action for K2 as the concentration of Y over the concentration of X with the entire expression square. That would be the same as K1 squared. Good job, Benjamin. If we multiply a reaction by some factor, we could simply raise the K to that power. Okay, one more case to consider. If our first reaction is A plus B use C, we can write the law of mass action that K1 equals C over A times B. For the second reaction, B plus D use E, then the law of mass action K2 will be E over B times D. Now, if we add those two reactions, we would end up with A plus 2B plus D on the reactant side and C plus E on the product side. The equilibrium expression for the overall reaction would be K3 equals C times E over A times B squared times D. Can you rewrite K3 in terms of K1 and K2? I can rewrite the equilibrium expression of K3 in terms of the equilibrium expression of K1 and K2 Therefore, I can rewrite the equilibrium constant K3 by simply multiplying K1 by K2 together. Excellent, Benjamin. When we add reactions together, 
we have to take the product of those individual k values. In the next topic, we will look at the relationship between kp and kc. kp is the equilibrium constant with respect to partial pressures, and kc is the equilibrium constant with respect to molar concentrations.